I'm going to be adding another feature to the Azure Functions um, app that I have for managing notifications for the PowerShell live live streamers when they come online. And uh, the new feature that I want to add is the ability to uh, post a notification to Discord whenever one of the streamers come online. So we're already doing Twitter. So I should be seeing a notification from myself pretty soon coming across the PowerShell Live Twitter page, assuming that everything's still up and running. I saw that it worked earlier today for um, Joel, so that that's good to see it uh, working for other people. And uh, now I'd like to add uh, messages to Discord so that we can see who's coming online. And the reason for that is that we were using this now live bot and while it's okay it was down for like two days and wasn't working and we couldn't really figure out how to how to fix it and the primary discord owner for the powershell discord was uh you know they're busy right now so um, we couldn't really do a whole lot of intensive troubleshooting anyways and i'm like i'm already building this app um so why not? The other thing is that I have to manage the list of users in that separately. Uh, so right now, when I add a live stream to the PowerShell Live list, I have to on Twitch, I have to add it in three places. There is a, uh, I guess I can pull up the account and show it. That'd probably be a little bit easier. Yeah, there's the notification from Twitter about this. Uh, pull up uh, Firefox here. So, if we look at the PowerShell Live thing, and it's probably going to be all um, crazy right now. So, the uh, channels down here that are listed, I have to update this manually. This list right here, I have to update manually as well. And then additionally, I have to actually set the um, uh, settings in the dashboard and then channel and uh, this channel. Oh, I have to update this host list here. So that's a little, uh, that's already three places that I have to do it. And I looked, none of these APIs are available for me to update at least I'm pretty sure none of them are. Um, this one is specifically this host list is definitely not. And this is like the definitive list, right? These are the ones that are actually going to be hosting whenever it's live. Although right now it doesn't show me hosting. Actually it does. Awesome. Good. So anyways, that's three places that I have to set that up. And uh, that's, that's just three places too many already. And then I have to manage the... Uh, we go to Discord here. In our Discord stream, you know, we have to manage the the list here. And so like that means anytime somebody news come on, I've gotta, you know, add them to the list here. So that's that's four places. And that's in addition to my notification stream, which you know we're updating with this right here and using uh, the configuration as code for that. So yeah, that's a lot of places to update. Uh, so with now live being offline for two days and it being like an additional thing and it being relatively easy to create a webhook to work with the uh, API uh, or Discord to submit messages to it, um, I figure why not just add that feature here uh, to my bot and then remove our reliance on now live and. That way, I, when I update this once, we'll get notifications on Twitter and to Discord. And we'll also get them to Slack because we have the bridge um, between uh, the streaming channels on Slack and Power and the PowerShell Slack and the PowerShell Discord, the bridge. So uh, that means that notifications should go out to the Slack users as well. At least I'm hoping. We'll see. Um, so that does mean that we need to do quite a few things so what we'd like to be able to do is mention the discord user 
whenever they are um, live streaming. Uh, so we're going to need to be updating the JSON here. Uh, and that means that we also have to update our model for the uh, subscription, Twitch subscription. One of these is the right one. We're going to have to update this. Uh, it also means that our webhook endpoint needs to be updated to support uh, getting an additional um, parameter here. And uh, we're going to have to do some other logic because I did some some testing and some uh, validation here that uh, uh, we're going to have to basically have something represent a null character for when they don't have a Twitter name or don't have a Discord name. And that means that we also have to update uh, some other things as well to manage that. The, uh, in the models, there is the Twitch webhook subscription, which we have this logic. So this is going to have to be updated as well to support um, the Discord ID. So um, I figured it's a good idea to, to, to make these changes now and look at how we make this uh, work forward, going forward. Uh, I have to say that I'm not extremely um, pleased with the model of using the uh, hook here. So let's say that I add a whole bunch of extra services. The route for the URL starts to get funky. So. Like, uh, let's say that uh, my webhook base URL is HTTP home forward slash. Let me zoom in a little bit so it's a little bit more readable. Um, is HTTP, HTTP, uh, and this is just for simplicity, webhook uh, forward slash, right? So let's say that this was the base URL. So now uh, underneath that, you'd have to do their Twitter name. So, um, Mark Twitter, right? I'm ah, sorry. There's their lives. Their uh, Twitch name. So this would be like Mark Twitch, right? And then their Twitter name. So Mark Twitter. And then now I'm going to have to do my Discord ID, which is like some long string of numbers, right? Now what happens if I if like I decide that I need to add another service? Do I continue with this pattern and add you know something here? Like I don't know, are we gonna notify Reddit so mark Reddit? Like do I keep up this pattern? And to me it seems kind of uh, maybe not the right way to go, but I also don't have a decent way of testing if I can uh, support if the Twitch webhooks will support um, uh, query strings. So let's say that I could submit this to like, thanks for the follow. Uh, let's say that you could do a uh, Twitter name and then and Twitch name or actually Twitch name is going to be like absolutely needed. So it would be like Mark Twitch, uh, Twitter name and, uh, discord. Right. And, uh, Reddit. Right. Like, I don't think that that would be supported by their webhooks. Um, I don't have a really good way of testing without, like, you know, doing a lot of uh, extra work. So I'm going to say that I'm going to put that off for now. And because um, I'm getting a two for one bang on adding Discord and it's going to update both Discord and Slack, hopefully, I'm going to just uh, say that for now, that's good. And I can investigate whether or not we can use query strings with the webhooks um, at a later date when I start uh, adding more notification services to this. Um, and some notification services may not even need the uh, ID, right? Like, so um, I think that right now I can just kind of update this simply. So the first thing that I need to do is 
I'm going to start by extending the subscription um, model. Uh, actually, before I do that, I need to uh, check out master. Pull. Create a new branch. Feature. Add Discord. Oh man, I really cannot type. Add Discord notification support. All right, so now I'm on this new uh, branch. I'm going to go ahead and push it up just because even though it's tracking master right now, it's not any different. So the first thing that I want to start off here is adding the uh, new thing. And this is going to be Discord name. And Discord name. So this will make it so that uh, a Discord name can be supplied to the uh, in the JSON payload and get translated into the Discord name. That's the model update. Uh, so the next thing that I need to work on is this uh, it's now it's uh, Twitch webhook subscription. This one right here. So this one takes in uh, the data that's returned from the uh, endpoint to see what your current Twitch subscriptions are. And uh, it does some math here to, or some uh, logic here to set the Twitter name and the uh, uh, Twitch name. So I need to update this so that if it's more than seven, add uh, that. And then I need to update this to more than eight to seven, right? So what this does is that that uh, URL, when we uh, so that URL when we split it out, the um, it's being split by the there. So if we did HTTP webhook. And then it's uh, uh, mark Twitch, mark Twitter, mark um, Discord, which is actually like numbers, right? So uh, this piece right here is much longer than I'm demonstrating here. But so this would be part when we split it, split out the actual URL by the uh, forward slash um, part five is the twitch name part six is the twitter name and part seven would be the discord name so we need to just uh, keep this pattern on maybe there's something that makes a little bit more sense to do the logic wise um, if you're thinking well why don't you just use a switch statement um, if, if you're coming from PowerShell that might make sense but this is C sharp and the switch statements don't work the same way in C sharp they uh, uh, don't uh, they don't run multiple times so we're uh, uh, we're gonna keep this as ifs for now unless somebody's got a clever way of, of doing this um, we're gonna have to add some additional logic here so I'm going to be adding a null character. So one thing that Azure Functions doesn't support is uh, the ability to like say that, you know, automatically determine that this is a Discord ID, you know, and this is a, uh, you know, a Twitter ID. And there's no way to like, just like leave this out and do just the ID. So we have to have something in here all the time. So I'm going to be using double um, dash to represent that. And I think that will be um, the best way to do this. Uh, 
so I need to do some logic here that if it's uh, double dash, we're not going to do that. But I need a constant. Um, and this constant is going to be used across multiple things. So I'm going to add this to my utility uh, class here. Um, public static const no string uh, I'm going to call this uh, name null mm, string I guess that makes sense name null string equals now what is it complaining about uh why are you complaining about that public static constant string that's weird Cannot be marked static. Does that work? Yeah. All right. So it just doesn't like static on that. So, anyways, because this is a static class, I guess it doesn't want you to name also, I don't know, whatever. We'll just. I don't question the logic um, that happens in there. Uh, so, going back to the data here we're going to uh, six not equal utility dot Ah, get back here. There. And basically the same thing down here. Only with part seven. All right, so. Yeah, so basically we're saying that if the parts length is greater than seven and the parts index six does not equal the name null string, then go ahead and set that uh, the part six to the uh, thing. And that way we can just kind of trick out that the double dash is null. So we have to add similar logic to our registration thing. I think on the model side, I'm done. Uh, I don't think that I need to update any of the other models. So I think I can update the uh, webhook congestion now. And we're going to add another part here to be discord name. So this is the webhook ingestion function that is used to uh, uh, by Twitch. So we give this as the callback uh, URL and uh, Twitch calls into this. And it does it for several things. It does it whenever we're subscribing and unsubscribing from a webhook. Uh, it'll hit this. And then it also gets called every time a, um, uh, a stream goes online that we've subscribed to that webhook. So uh, right now we have that like going like a Twitch webhook. So it's like this down here. whatever the base URL is, and then this, and then 
like for me it looks like this um marky kraus marky kraus and i believe that my discord id so So this is what it looks like for me. Um, that's the, and that's what I'm going to give to Twitch to call back. And so this, this piece right here corresponds to stream name. This piece right here corresponds to Twitter name. And this piece right here respond, corresponds to Discord name. So updating the route, I have to also add another I have to add another uh, parameter in the uh, or argument in the uh, sequence here so uh, I want to log that what discord name was provided So that way we know what Discord name was coming across. And I believe down here, setting Twitter name, item, username, stream, item. Okay. So there, there was another place where I updated this. Um, and that is on the stream object. And I'm thinking now that it probably would have been better to put subscription on this instead. So I'm probably going to change that. Uh, cause I did that with another one. Um, this was a bit naive when I did it. So, uh, I'm going to have to update, but I think ultimately it's going to be a better idea just to put subscription on here. I'm going to have to update some other code as a result of doing that. Um, and this is no longer a string. I need to add my using markykraus.twitch.models. And I need to add this as a Twitch subscription. All right, so. That probably makes some, uh, some more sense. That way uh, I'm not having to update this in multiple places every single time. So I'm going to need to uh, create a new subscription up here. New subscription. Uh, sorry. Var subscription equal new Twitch subscription. Okay, so I need to add my models up here. Marky Kraus dot twitch dot models. All right, so now that the model is included there, I can access the type. And this is a. Uh, name equal stream name uh, comma 
Twitter name equals Twitter name and Discord name equals Discord name. All right, so this is like in C sharp, this is similar to the uh, um, way of doing this in, uh, let's see, I'll show you an example in. PowerShell. It's the same way of doing something like uh, my class, you know, la la la. It's interesting. My stream must have started and stopped again. It's uh, acting funny. Um, make sure that that's not freaking out right quick. That was only the one oh never mind it's uh just my notifications being wrong it's not actually going out more than twice that's fine all right sorry about that uh so anyways yeah that that's the it's a c-sharp equivalent of doing this in in powershell all right so just a simplified way to initialize class, um, an instance of that class rather. Uh, and I probably need to put a uh, Hmm. Because yeah, this will do it as dash as dash dash, and we don't want that. We want it to not add that. Um, Starting anything dead. Putting the logic for the dash dash on the Twitch subscription would probably be a smarter thing to do. But there's also some uh, logic we could do if uh, I can look this up right quick. Probably spelled that wrong. Yeah, so I can never remember how this thing works, so I have to look it up. Uh, yeah, condition, sequence, uh, consequence, alternative. All right, so. Yeah. All right. So the way we do this is that uh, stream name equal equal um, let's see not equal stream name is going to be fine that one's always going to be there but this one is uh, not equal utility dot name string then it's uh, going to be Twitter name. Or string dot empty. All right, and we need to do the same thing with the uh, discord name, discord name, not equal utility dot name string go away discord name
string dot empty. All right. So basically, this is saying that set the Twitter name to either Twitter name or string dot empty. If its Twitter name does not equal the name null string, then set it to Twitter name. Else, set it to string empty. And same thing with the Discord name. Oh. Probably be better to implement this on the class. I don't feel like dealing with that. Uh, the models. I, I'm already like not real happy having this logic on one of the other pieces, but uh, that's okay. We'll deal with it. Uh, the problem is like when you start trying to do like fancy things on uh, classes that are used for JSON serialization, it uh, it starts to have um, problems. Okay, so instead of uh, item Twitter name, it's now going to be uh, we're just going to set item. Username's not done, uh, but we are going to set the um, uh, item dot subscription. Equal subscription. All right. Yeah. All right. So I'm still going to be updating the username to the stream name. For whatever reason, the username of the uh, of the stream is blank when it comes back. Uh, it's an empty string. Um, that's weird. <laughs> it does that for everybody. It's it's not just mine. So it, any of the uh, webhook calls back, they uh, are missing the username. So. The uh, Twitter event handler then or, uh, is messed up. Also, the Twitch stream event handler. Um, actually, that one's fine. We're going to have to do some additional logic here when we add our next function. But for now, that's fine because it's just passing on the stream event. But here, because we've moved around where the stream name is and the Twitter name is, we have to correct this... Uh, this code so uh, this becomes subscription just get rid of this subscription dot Twitter name and then uh, This as well. I can leave this, that's fine because I'm updating it. Uh, all right, so that should be fine now. So so this should, in theory, be um, at a spot where it could work uh, without breaking our current subscriptions. Um, it just isn't uh, uh, complete. We don't have anything that... Um... Oh, I have not updated this one. It should be Discord name. That would have been very confusing why that was failing. <laughs> um... Yeah, so this this would be in theory this code should be ready for uh, uh, being used without breaking the current stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and take this as a commit here. Just look at the changes that I've done. Um, I changed the I removed the Twitter name and added uh, the subscription on it. The uh, added the Discord name to the um, Twitch subscription on the uh, webhook handler. I added handling for our uh, fake null string and 
uh, also adding the Discord name setting. On this one, we uh, added the Discord name to the uh, to the route. We added the Discord name parameter. We're logging the Discord name. We're now creating a subscription object, and we changed the code down here to assign the item subscription from that subscription ob object we created above. And on the Twitter event handler, we had to update our code to point to the new path to where the Twitter name exists on the uh, Twitch stream event type. So it's under subscription Twitter name now. Other than that, that code is the same. And then under utility, we added a constant string for the fake null string we're using for, for this. All right, so this up all right close that go back over here so now that we've got this uh, kind of set up we want to basically add another function um, to manage uh, the queues. Um, so we're gonna have to add another queue uh, to be managed out of the, uh, the uh, Twitch webhook uh, event, the Twitch stream event handler. All right, so this is the kind of middle function in the pipeline. So the ingestion is supposed to just handle whether or not it's a valid web hook. Um, this is uh, actually handling rerouting to the various uh, um, streams that we're going to do. So we need a new uh, queue to pass things to. Um, and this queue is going to become a trigger for our new function that we'll have to create. So this is going to be a Discord notifications queue. And I'm basically going to copy this piece here. and pass this off to uh, name of discord queue. Ooh, that's crazy. And pass this to Discord queue instead. Oh no, sorry. That was right. This needs to be changed. All right, so that will queue it to the Discord queue, which will handle that. So. That's our change there. Now we need to add a new function. Um, let's do that. Last time I tried to do that, it didn't play out so well. So I'm just going to try uh, doing this. I'm going to basically copy this uh, Twitter event handler because it's going to be very similar and rename this to discord event handler or not. <laughs> what? 
That's cute. Rename. Wow. It's not letting me rename that file. That's interesting. if now that I've changed that that's done something slightly different it'll let me what is going on there we go okay quit freaking out there uh <laughs> just like totally ignored all the work that I just did on that um whatever uh some background process was probably hogging the file so um discord event handler save this see if the text goes away every time i copy one of these files it's like nah you can't uh you can't just do that this down make it a little bit more readable um, so uh, I am gonna have a um, a read-only static string in here that's gonna be a setter it's going to be uh, you know what I probably should have to this is a good idea so there's a Twitter tweet template I'm gonna do a discord message template. I don't know if that's actually going to work. Um, we'll see. Uh, so what this will do is this will uh, get the uh, Discord message template uh, from the environment, which will be an app setting. Um, and then the uh, other thing that I'm going to need is the uh, Discord um, webhook URI. So those are going to be Two more settings that I do in. So while I've added these, I'm going to go ahead and document them uh, in the README so that I know what they are later. should be kind of uh, self-explanatory. Yeah. Discord. Discord. Discord webhook. There we go. Um, close out of view. Close out of view. Close out of view. Discord message templates. This is the uh, message template for Discord messages. And I'll have to update that with what I'm actually doing. Because if you look at the Twitch or the Twitter tweet template, I say like how it's being called. But I haven't quite decided what all I'm going to be putting in there yet. Although I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be using a very similar thing. Except I don't think I need to care about uniqueness, so I'm not going to include a timestamp. 
uh, but for consistency, I might include the timestamp as an option to be passed in, but not actually call it in my message templates. So the other thing that I added was the, uh, Discord notifications. Let's see, what do I call the queues there? Queue name for Discord events. I'm also going to update the documentation for the uh, Twitch uh, this is Twitter event handler um, So that piece is updated. Um, let me also add a Discord event handler here, and its trigger is I'm basically going to copy this and replace Twitter with Discord. So that's keeping my documentation up to date as I'm changing this. Uh, I could update this uh, architecture for the webhook. Um, Discord event handler function is triggered by the Discord notification queue and will create a Discord message. Stating a channel has gone live. All right, there. That's uh, that's nice and uh, complete. Um, I just want to keep that updated uh, for future me more so than anybody else, because I'll come back to this later. I was like, "What is this craziness? What are these functions doing? How they fit together? I don't even know what's going on here." But I'm sure watching me update a README file is gripping stuff. Uh, I'm sure everyone is really interested in that. Uh, so going back to our Discord event handler. Um, we're going to 
be uh I think this one is going to use its own HTTP client. See, I was debating about making a public static HTTP client off of my other utility just to make sure that it's being used everywhere. So I might rethink that because this is going to have to make an uh, out, outbound web call. Um, I don't think that it needs to use my Twitch client API I created. Um, but that Twitch client API does have a static HTTP client. Um, so the HTTP client in uh, C Sharp is uh, something you're only really supposed to define once in your code. Um, and you can call it from everywhere. Uh, but I think that I'm just going to go ahead and create another one in here. Um, so. Private static uh, HTTP clients, and I'll call this Discord client. New HTTP client. And we need to add the using statement for that. So I'll have two, I guess two is not too bad. Uh, but the reason why you're supposed to use one is for the um, uh, fact that you, it, if you created a whole bunch of the, like if every time this was instantiated or whatever, it would uh, result in port exhaustion because an HTTP client doesn't truly dispose even if you dispose of it. Um, in .NET, I think I trace the dispose back and it does zip. It like doesn't actually do any kind of cleanup whatsoever. Um, that might have changed since 2.1 or whatever when they did the major changes to the HTTP clients under the hood. But uh, uh, when I looked at it the last time, it was... Where is this? Sorry, I've got a... Oh. Uh, right. Um, anyways, the uh, HTTP client is just supposed to be used uh, statically. I'm not going to go into that. It's, it's boring stuff, but uh, the... I'm going to just do a search and replace on this. That should update that in the places where it's happening. So this is going to be triggered by the uh, queue. It's going to create a stream event. Um, I really hate that they use stream on that. I'm tempted. I'm still tempted to go and just rename this everywhere as uh, stream event. Uh, I don't even know if stream events already taken, but I, I would even call it Twitch stream event. Um, the this is from the Twitch lib. Um, I borrowed it and stream. You know, system IO stream is. There's a common type there, and that just kind of is an unfortunate choice name, uh, name naming choice there. Anyways, so the first thing that it does is going to log that we've started processing this for an event. Um, if stream event is not live, uh, we're not going to do anything. Um, I haven't seen anything come through when when the uh, when the event is done, you get this back to the API, which is extremely helpful. So as 
that's what Twitch gives you when the stream goes offline. Um, so uh, I haven't seen anything other than live in the stream type that's come through, but it's possible there could be something like, I don't know. I can't even fathom. So the same thing that we're going to be doing with uh, the uh, Twitter name. So uh, with Twitter, um, with the Twitter event handler, we were looking at the uh, uh, Twitter name. And if it was uh, Miller Whitespace, we we're just going to use the stream name. Um, that way we're not, it won't at mention anybody uh but if they do have a Twitter name set, it will at mention them on Twitter. So we need to do something similar for Discord. Um, so we're going to look at the Discord name. And then uh, if it's not set, if there's no Discord name, we're going to use the stream event username. Um, but if it is set, we're going to use the Discord name. And there's a special formatting to this you have to do. I'll switch back over to Firefox to look at what that is. We go to here. So basically it's this, right? It's this long thing. It's basically like uh, the uh, yeah, open brackets, open pointy bracket, uh, and then at, and then the username. So, so that's maybe a little bit more visible, this right here. So the username when they're doing, uh, when their Discord name is set is going to be at, Discord name and so stream URI is still going to be the same. We're still going to use that in there and tweet. So this is instead of a tweet, we're going to do. Um, My Discord message equals uh, Discord message templates, stream URI, username, and date. So I'm going to leave this the same, even though I'm not going to uh, use it um, in my actual template. I don't think that there is a character limit on this for that. So I'm not going to worry about it for Discord. I don't know what the Discord character limit is and I'm not going to do. Ah, I accidentally deleted this, but I do need it. Um, so in my Twitter event handler, could probably move this off to the utility one as well. And I think I'm going to do that. Since I'm now using it between two different ones, it makes sense to do that there instead. So on the utility class, change this to public and it's just so that it's going to be a little bit more um, efficient uh, 
And I need to also change this in the Twitter event handler. Get rid of this. Utility. So on the, I can get rid of this on the Discord um, one because I'm not borrowing this from this blog. Um, I'm only going to get rid of this stuff here. All right, so at this point, it's pretty much like it was for the Twitter one with Discord, basically search and replaced and uh, the uh, it says to me that we could probably centralize that code since it does seem to be reused but I'm not gonna worry about that right now um, it is slightly different in that the discord name is is that so we'd have to do some different logic anyways for that so Maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, so the next phase would be to create an actual webhook call. Um, so I have already registered a webhook. I haven't done any testing with it to see how it works. But from reading the documentation, you don't need any. If you're doing a single user to a single channel to Discord and you have the rights to create a webhook, in that channel, then you don't need any kind of authentication or anything special to do it. You just do a JSON payload to the webhook URL and it posts in there. So I chose this to be really simple. I could do like a full app integration type thing and be able to take messages back and forth. But really, I just want this to be a notification, right? It's just it's just best effort throw out a, uh, a notification at things. Um, so we do need to create a uh, a model for that. So if I look at, I think that I have their model um, somewhere in here for what needs to be done for submitting to a webhook. Maybe I don't. I guess I didn't save this. Uh... Wait. Mark down. Execute a webhook. Okay. This is some point supports both JSON and form data bodies. It doesn't require multi part form data requests. Instead, it does require multi part form data requests instead of the normal JSON request type when uploading files. When uploading files. Okay. Um, make sure that your content type is multi part form data. If you're doing that note that in this case embeds all right so needs a content a username this is override the default username of the webhook avatar url override the avatar tts um, true if there's a tts no uh, file and So you need one of content, file, or embeds. 
So we're going to do uh, content, which is just a uh, string payload, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the message content's up to 2,000 characters. So there's our, uh, our uh, maximum there.
Ah, I'm on mute. Uh, create a HTTP request method message and in here we need to set the um, content to a And we're going to do inside here, we're going to do JSON convert dot. It's probably going to complain. This is a new string content. JSON convert serialize object. And create the new thing in there. I'll create it up here. Um, set a string discord message. I'm going to switch this around and create a um, there and then this has an extra semicolon at the end here giving me all the squigglies um, Now in here we can serialize the my Discord object as the string content and encoding Stop. I need. I know what I'm doing here. Don't. There. <laughs> oh. Adventures of IDs, IDEs. And then application JSON. I really should have by now. Um, set this as a uh, static so I'm going to do that now in the utilities uh, I'm just using it in so many places Places where this is at. So here I'm going to change this to utility. 
application json content type um, save twitch client change this one to utility dot application content type change this one to utility application json content type and then this is the static that we created so we're good there all right so updated all occurrences of that um, close that out uh, I don't believe we need any headers uh, when I looked at it um, I'm just digging around on Google. I don't necessarily want to show the screen because it's not really interesting, but I'm on a page now that I'm reading through so I can uh, go through here. Um, I really think you just post to it. Like, it doesn't say anything that you need anything. So we'll... Uh, just go with that. Um, the uh, documentation like doesn't say you post to a uh, webhook ID. Um, I'm curious what a Slack compatible webhook is. Uh, I guess that's if it was coming from Slack. Um, and then GitHub compatible webhook that'd be if it's coming from github uh, I guess they have some uh, default ones but um, yeah it looks like you just have to send this there <laughs> I, I don't know if you're being facetious or not but the the background music on this I'm using the pretzel rocks thing and it's, uh, uh, let's see, what channel am I listening on this again? Uh, I think it's the um, the Chill channel is the one that I'm looking at at the moment. Uh, yeah, Chill. I'm on the Chill station. Uh, I had it on the EDM one, but I think I exhausted everything on that, play on that list already on my stream. So I was like, I'll just switch it over to Chill. Um, it's good stuff so far. I, I don't have any complaints. And uh, Pretzel Rock is uh, uh, fantastic for having this music that uh, you can use in your live streams and not get copyright uh, issues and stuff. I've had no problems whatsoever with my Twitch or my YouTube videos for this. So if you are planning to stream yourself, definitely check it out. That's that's not music that you use, Corey. That that's just the sweet, soothing sound of your voice. Um, <laughs> that freaking core Bob guy. That freaking guy. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't think that I need to do anything other than pass some content in. I could do a real quick test, uh, but. Uh, I don't feel like it at the moment because uh, I'd have to finagle around a few things. So we create our HTTP message, so we need to send it. 
and we are going to do var response. I'm going to call it HTTP response just so that uh, I'm clear here. I think that I want to actually capture what this payload looks like. Um, so I'm going to create a string and then log it for HTTP message body. Log, log information. message body there just so I can make sure that it's being serialized properly soup one more time uh, so we are going to await a call to uh, discord client dot send async oh I need to set the URI on this that is important was the name of this that I created uh, discord webhook URI request URI so if I spell it right there we go And there is a HTTP completion option dot um, headers read is really all I care about is headers on this. Why are you complaining? I'm not async. Well, that's crazy. Um, I could do an async void. It's fine. We're not going to be returning anything out of this. Uh, hooray, async. Um, so the next bit would be to get some uh, data back from this as to what's transpired. So I can copy some of this from the Twitter. So I'm almost, <laughs> I'm almost thinking that it's better just to put it in here <laughs> uh, and just handle all my HTTP calls out of this. But anyways, this uh, right here is what I'm looking for. If uh, Oh, that was a bad idea. <laughs> oh, 
fantastic. There we go. Have to replace this with this. Uh, I'm just going to put request failed. It's a lot more obvious when it's not coming from multiple spaces here. Log dot. There we go. And then I also want to steal where I convert the body and uh, spit that out. That's not in utility, it's in Twitch class. Clean up some of these. Okay. I actually think this is better to put on a different line. Okay. Uh, I also need to set the method here to post. type are you? HTTP method. Post. Alright, so in theory if I have all of the um, app settings in place this should work. So I've got an error somewhere in here, or so the uh, screen would have me believe. Uh, here. Why? Oh. Search and replace screwed that up. How about now? We got the uh, errors taken care of. Yes, we do. All right. So... Assuming that I have all of my um, ducks in a row, they should be good to go. Uh, I'm going to uh, go through the changes that we've made here. So in the README, we have updated that. That's good. I'm good with that. Discord message recreated. It's just got a content piece to it. Discord event handler is where we've done so much code. It's just like the Twitter one uh, up until the point where it gets to here and it calls a uh, uh, a new, um, it calls a, a HTTP endpoint. Send that out. So the uh, Twitch stream, um, I'm sorry, the Twitch stream uh, event handler, which handles the incoming events and re queues them into the various ones, is now also queuing to the Discord queue the message. And we updated the Twitter event handler to use the um, new uh, constant that we created that is shared between the event handlers now. Uh, 
in the uh, utility, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Twitch client, we updated it to use the new um, constant we created for the application JSON. And we did that as well there. So that's the uh, new pieces in there. And then in utility, we have a couple of new constants that we just discussed. So the uh, disable notifications and those, since they're being used all over the place, um, using a constant is a, is a good idea instead of having the string defined a million places. All right. Uh, I think that's a, uh, a good enough uh, spot to do a uh, stage and a commit. A lot of code changes just to add one more functions but should be less painful in the future I hope uh, push that up so I'm gonna take a quick break here to uh, get some uh, sustenance and also to put them put some things into the API off screen um, so set up some app settings without some prying eyes and I will be right back.
All right, I'm back here. Um, it's a good thing I stepped away because I thought about something else that we need to do. Uh, just adding this function and adding the ingestion is all well and good, but I also need to update the code that I use to manage my subscriptions. Um, so in the uh, Twitch subscription uh, registration, we need to add some additional logic in here um, to deal with the fact that we're now taking in Discord as well. Uh, make sure that we're handling this properly so we are converting this into an I list of twitch subscription um, counts should have the subscription counts subscription registration response yeah so twitch uh, Subscription registration response. I just want to make sure that that looks right in my models. It should be fine. These are just Twitch subscriptions, which already have our changes on it. And the Twitch webhook, the piece underneath it is also a uh, subscription. So it's already got the piece that it needs on it as well. Um, so we can close out of that. Close out the Discord event handler, the Twitch stream event handler, clients. Like, why does it want to go back to the last one I was on? Like, why does it want to go to everything but the last one I was on? Uh, and that's because it's closed. Um, function subscription registration endpoint. Double click that so it stays open. All right. Um, so we get the response there. Uh, Get the current subscriptions that should work fine um, let me just uh, go to definition here on this one and yeah it should automatically translate all that so we don't need to worry um, add Twitch name, Twitter name, and Discord name. name, Twitter name, Discord name. Subscription dot Discord name. using the uh, Twitch name as the key. So I will need to unregister everybody before I make these code changes live and then re-register everyone afterwards. Um, so that'll be fun. I have a good plan for doing that though. So I'm not too worried about it. Find missing subscriptions to add. Good. Okay. 
So Twitch subscription add is just calling this. So we need to update the logic on this. Uh, which is just calling this subscription uh, action here. So it needs to know about the Discord name. And it needs to know that uh, we're using uh, dash dash for um, non-existent. The good news is that this simplifies our logic a little bit um, for, for this piece. Uh, because we can always call the, uh, the path now, but we have to know We're gonna pass that in. So, all right. Uh, I guess what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do var um, Twitter part equals. Um, Twitter name uh, so that's gonna start getting the, I'm almost thinking that I should pass this off as a new kind of uh, utility function so basically what I need to do is I need to determine if this is uh, null or empty I guess I can just do that um, and just assume that I'm passing in this correct so right uh, yeah, we'll just do it this way. This will be fine. Uh, this would be utility dot name null string or So basically we're going to uh, define the Twitter part and the Discord part. So maybe it doesn't make it simpler. <laughs> URI equal base URI Twitch name uh, Twitter part. Discord part. So what we do there is we're basically looking at the Twitter part and if it's, uh, we're looking at the Twitter name and if it's null or empty, we're going to set it as the, um, 
uh, we're going to set it as our fake null string. And then if it's not null or empty, we'll go ahead and set set it as the Twitter name. And we'll do the same thing with the Discord name. And then the callback URI is, is based off of the webhook base URI subscription uh, dot Twitch name, the Twitter part and the Discord part, which we um, define just above it. So uh, if there's no Twitter name, then this will be uh, dash dash. If there's no Discord name, this will be dash dash. So we can have excluded Twitter names and Discord names, and we can pass in both null. And then also, if you if we submit the registration to the endpoint with dash dash, it will also act as null. So um, this will kind of help us with some uh, backwards compatibility a little bit. Uh, Other than that, I don't think that it uh, needs to do anything else. Okay, so in theory, the uh, code should work for the subscription side of things now. But I was pretty sure I had more than one code change here. Yeah. So just making some logging changes and making some logic changes there and then uh, another thing that I need to do is update my script for managing this All right, so um, what I want to also get back is the Discord name. I want to dis display that as well on the output of these. I don't believe that I actually need to change any of the logic inside this code. Because all it's doing is taking JSON and shoving it into the endpoint. We've already handled that. So, um, what we would need to do is also update our JSON. But I'm going to do this uh, somewhat clever, cleverly. Um, So so I will need to unsubscribe all of my current subscriptions because it's going to ruin the URIs and all the callbacks and all the stuff on that before I go through with, uh, with that. Um, so... Hopefully that'll work. Thanks for the follow. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go ahead and unsubscribe everybody. It's it's a Sunday evening. I hope no one else is planning to uh, do this. Um, do any kind of streaming right now because this will break them. Uh, this is another reason why I wanted to consider doing the... Um, instead of using the URL pieces, being able to use the query string. Uh, but I don't know if the Twitch API supports a query string for the webhook callback and um, I don't have a good way to test that without creating another app and going through all kinds of craziness so what I uh, 
we'll need to do is create us another um, um, branch and then remove all the current registrations, which I haven't tested. So we'll, we'll test that, see if that works properly. Um, let me just go through here. Yeah, this is just an output change. And then this is changing some log information and this changes the uh, URI logic as well as one other thing that I need to do here is change this to discord name so I can see it in the logs. All right, so we're going to uh, submit all these. And this is going to be update uh, registration management code. Get subscription. That sounds kind of redundant, right? Like subscription registration. But uh, that's what it is. Push. Okay, so I need to go back to my master branch. Um, pull in all the changes to make sure that I'm up to date here. Uh, create a new branch called uh, CAC for configuration as code. Uh, remove all registrations. And in that, we're just going to take this and do that. That should send an empty array to the, uh, to the endpoint and in theory remove all the registrations or probably more likely in fact blow up but uh we'll see um and i'm just prepping this it's not going to actually remove anything at the moment this up there so we're ready to go um, so one more thing I need to do before I move forward with uh, actually uh, testing as I needed to create the um, I'm gonna recheck out my other branch um, I want to read me so this uh, discord message template um, so uh, it's going to get the Discord name passed to it as a, I'm sorry, the Twitch name passed to it as zero. Actually, the Twitch URI passed to it as zero. The username passed to it, and that's going to be either the um, thing. So what I have for the Twitter notification, uh, tweet template right here is let me paste that in so this is what I have for the uh, tweet notification so this is the URL of their live stream this is either their Twitter name or their uh, live stream their uh, twitch stream name and then this is a UTC date which we had to do to create some uniqueness but on uh, this one, we don't need to do that. We definitely don't need to do a hashtag PowerShell Live, I don't think. So I think that I'm just going to use this, and this would get replaced with, uh, like, my live stream URL. It's like twitch.tv Marky Krause. And then it would get uh, replaced... Uh, also with 
This is cute. Put my user ID in this kind of thing, which if I get from Discord real quick without switching on the stream, if I can find Discord. Yeah, so it would get uh, done with this. And it would look something like this, which I'm hoping um, will just... Uh, Uh, I need to get rid of this as of. I can do streaming live now. That works. Um, so it'll look like this. And this will get translated into an app mention into the uh, user. And then if I didn't have my Discord user ID in there, it would do this. So it would look like this. So that's the message that's going to do. I think that that's a uh, simple enough message. Uh, so I'm not going to uh, to change it much from that. So we go back over to Firefox and into the Discord. Did I already lose it? Yeah, I need to create a new one. Create a new setting, paste this in, and then go back over to VS Code, go to the README, and grab this Discord message template. Set that as the name. I already set offline my webhook URI and the note Discord notifications queue. Um, So now I've got the message template in there. That looks good. And um, OK, so before I move through with doing all the kinds of merges and changes and all that kind of stuff, uh, the uh, thing that I need to do in this branch is to go ahead and update some of these uh, names but before I do that I want to just, just make sure that it builds so I'm going to do I need to be in VS code dot net build make sure that that builds properly that's good so at the very least it builds whether or not it runs properly is a different story um, I can do Funk host start and just make sure that there's no startup issues. And there is some startup issues. Oh, I don't have a, a local setting set for this and this all right stand by I need to switch over to uh, privacy mode <laughs> um, ooh, that really just blew up like all over the place oh well, I'm glad that wasn't on screen um, Yeah, so the Discord notifications I need to add. So I can I can show at least this one because it's not secret or anything. Just so you understand what I'm doing. So uh, funk settings add Discord notifications and 
using the queue name of dis Discord notifications. Um, the uh, make sure there's no other startup issues. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I can't do anything with it, but at least I don't have launch issues. Um, so that's about the uh, best I can look for locally. Um, and the reason for that is that like uh, locally I have, uh, I'm using a lot of the same remote settings and I don't have anything in there to kind of change um, the behavior when it's local remote, so it's meh. Um, who cares? But it does show the webhook ingestion URL has been updated. Uh, so we should be good. It shows that the um, ooh. Which function, though? I'm going to bet that it's my Discord event handler. Uh, let's do... Let's go ahead and fix that. Source, functions, Discord event handler. Um... So yeah, it's complaining about this uh, not returning a task. So we're just gonna do task here. Is it that system threading task? You don't have to actually return anything, but uh, yeah. All right, so we'll save that. Um, control C is shut down. Dot net build. Funko start, and that error message should go away, or warning anyway should go away. Yeah. So we're all blue now, so that's good. Um, Again, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work, but uh, it does at least mean that it's going to start up properly. Um, okay, so I'm going to commit this change in here. Um, Okay, so push that up. So now I've got a couple of things that I need to do. Uh, so um, good news is about all this being source controlled and what's actually live is that I can do rollbacks and fix all of my crazy. Uh, the uh, Firefox over here, um, going to go into here go into this is the project where I'm I've got all this stuff that I showed before the uh, we need to create a new pull request but we need to pull it from the CAC remove all registrations so we need to unregister everybody before we make this code change um, actually before I do that let me switch back over here uh, So I am going to create a new branch 
to be prepared um, for master. Um, this is going to be uh, CAC add registrations for Okay, and in this branch, I'm going to prep the subscriptions JSON so that it has our usernames. Uh, so, I'm going to be going back and forth between Discord here. Um, So that's my Discord ID number. Um, in Discord, you can uh, basically, uh, if you go into like user settings and then appearance and then developer mode and turn that on, it will show the uh, It'll add the ability to right click and then copy ID. Um, so we have Mr. Corey next. And not everybody has a. Uh, has a Discord account. Like, I don't even know if. Uh, Chris has the has a Discord account. We'll see. Cause there's no way to tell if this is the same, right? Like I don't think that it is. And yeah, I don't know what his is, so we'll leave him off here and he can update me later if he does have one. Uh, so the next user on the list is Mr. Thomas Rayner. So grab his ID here I'm just gonna update these um, a little bit uh, easier uh, So we can put this in there on all of them then, and I can uh, control C. All right, I can just go in and update all these as I find them. Like I know the PowerShell team's not gonna have one. I don't know if Tyler has one. Chrissy just showed up in, I'm not sure if that was uh, Slack or Discord. I'll have to check. Uh, Kevin, I don't know if Kevin has one. I think Doug's only in there. I know Glenn uses Discord. I don't know if he's in this Discord though. I don't think that Veronica is. Uh, PowerShell Live is definitely not. Uh, and I do know that Joel is. Um, so he never leaves the Discord. So that at Halbrad with, is that Mr. Hanky? Is <laughs> like, that's why I was like, the user picture is like, doesn't match what, uh, 
<laughs> yeah. I guess I can get that right. Like, uh, at how. I do not understand the discords. I do, like, I don't, how do I find out what, what is a messages profile? That's weird. Like, is that even right? Are you sure, Adil? Are, are you sure this is <laughs> right? That does not look like something you would do. Member directory. Is there such a thing as a member directory? Yeah, I don't even know. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, oh, I'm all over the place. <laughs> the people icon in the top right. Yeah. I do. Halberad. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. probably have to be in a different uh, channel to see it. Yeah, I don't see not a man like going to be offline. Profile message call user phone change Nick. Yeah, I can't. Uh... What man? Where'd you message me at? Where'd you post that at, Adil? Like, oh, there it is. From Halberad. Okay. All right, yeah, that's weird. That's just not like him at all <laughs> like no, at least not what I've okay whatever yeah well uh I don't know why that doesn't work for me it could be because I'm like in streamer mode or whatever Right, uh, I can copy the ID and put him in there anyways. <laughs> yeah, now he's, uh, it's late man or early. Right? Like, what's he doing? Is he still awake or is he? Checking that was your Discord account. Uh, 
so Corey, Thomas Trainer, Stevie. Probably find him in Oh, he's not online right now. Oh, there he is. Copy ID. Stevie Coaster with a uh, roller coaster um, on it. PowerShell team doesn't have one. I wonder if Tyler has one. Uh... Same Tyler, yeah. So, Chrissy, I think Chrissy was only in here in uh, Slack. She'll either be in here as CL or um, potato quality. Not in here as CL. Double check for potato quality. No CL or potato quality. Uh, so next one is Kevin Marquette. He's going to be on here as that's not him. Um, if he's on here at all. No, doesn't look like he is. Is it control B? Well, that's Slack. Um, I can only do uh, at mentions for uh, Discord. Um, we'll have to look work for something different if they are a Slack user. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that they're they're there. I think that they're only on Slack. Glenn, I think Glenn is. Offline, if he's on here at all. And no. I know that Glenn's also on Slack. So feature requests for the future, figure out how we deal with uh, um, Slack users from this notification. Uh, I might be able to add like, nope. I think in the Discord name, I could probably prepend it with at and then do a check and see if it has at at the beginning and if it does we don't do the true at mention that can be done 
and instead we just do at whatever and that will uh, just show us at blah 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 in like so I'm pretty sure if I do at Glenn Sardi it's just gonna it would just do something here but it would actually show up in the uh, the slack side um, but for now we just don't get notifications or we don't get their uh, at mention for that it's incentive for you guys to get on discord as opposed to um, that so I've prepped this it's uh, oh I need Joel's um, Joel's would be good it's like I'm pretty sure that all of the things are like not working right because you're because I'm in broadcast mode um, copy ID Thanks for looking, Adil, though. I appreciate uh, helping out there. Such a gripping work. Ah, oh, Veronica. Let me see if Veronica is in there. I'm not even sure if she's on Discord. I mean, on Slack, either. Like, I don't think she's on either. Um, yeah. I don't see, I don't see her, so that's fine. Don't expect everyone to be on every single one of these services. Eh, it's uh, not a hard requirement, and it'll show the uh, stream name anyways. They just won't get a at mention. So that looks good. I think uh, the uh, missing ones are the ones that we dug. Mm, Doug Fink. Jeez. I'm like, yeah, I think I've got them all. And there's like one that I skipped some, somewhere. Let's see. Doug. He's either going to be on here as like D Fink or Doug. I'm saying his name wrong. I know I'm butchering it. Uh, yeah, I don't see him on here. If uh, all right, that's cool. That's good enough. So, and push. Oh. All right. So I've committed this, I've pushed it. So the uh, next thing for me to do is to get back on the um, add Discord notification support because I just know that this one is going to require us to uh, do this. So we have to do a couple of things in the um, a couple of things in uh, here. First of all, uh, we need to do this pull request, create it, prove it, complete it. Uh, watch the pipeline for the subscription management. I'm 
really curious if this even works properly. Wow, it looks like it does. Um, so current subscriptions, queued for subscribe, none, queued from subscribe, all of them. So that worked to, to cleanse the palette, so to speak. These subscriptions should be unsubscribing now. I need to give it about, I don't know, a minute here. Um, so while I'm prepping, I'm going to create another pull request. Uh, this time. We're gonna pull in the feature add discord notification support branch just double check all the changes here. We update our registration script to show the Discord name. Um, we um, created the new Discord event handler function. We added a queue for Discord notifications to the um, event handler stream. Uh, Twitch subscription registration, we changed the logging to include the Discord name. Uh, the webhook ingestion was changed to have a new route. Um, also, Discord name parameter. Uh, it now creates a Twitch subscription object um, and uh, sets the Twitter name and Discord name uh, properly. Uh, the uh, yeah it sets the subscription on that uh, now instead of doing the Twitter name stuff. Um, the Twitter event handler we updated to use the new constants that we were using before. Um, The Discord uh, message, the Discord message CS uh, model was created with just a content property. Um, the stream CS uh, we updated to uh, take a subscription instead of the Twitter name, um, so that we the subscription now has our excess data that we need on it. Twitch subscription uh, type was updated to include a Discord name. The Twitch webhook subscription um, model now checks to see if the uh, parts are greater than uh, equal to seven and adds the, um, uh, the Twitter name if it happens to be a not null string and then does the same over here. Uh, although I'm thinking that maybe I can leave the dash dash in these and actually set them instead of empty strings. So have them as default as dash dash or whatever. Uh, the Twitch client we updated by um, basically changing the application content uh, JSON um, in a couple of places. And then we also uh, changed the logic for the Discord name now that we need to, to look out for that for when we're creating the callback URI. And then utility CS, uh, we added some constants to it so that we're being a little bit of good stuff. We updated our readme. So that's a good chunk of changes there that we're going to uh, merge in. Um, so first we're gonna create the pull requests um, live updates are disabled. It's a uh, fine. We'll refresh here. Um, 
The build is in progress. It's a new pull request. No, it's not new to me. <laughs> so uh, we can watch the build as it's running to make sure that it runs fine. Um, the build has to pass so that before we can merge it in, uh, I can approve this now. And it's uh, not ready to go until the uh, build is done. Um, build succeeded. Publish succeeded. An artifact upload succeeded. All right, so we can complete this uh, pull request. Um, so now another build is going to fire off from the fact that we merged. And since we just ran it against the same code base, it should be fine. Um, I don't expect this to fail. If it passed in the PR and failed in the merge, I would really wonder what the hell happened. Dark Elven magic or something. Probably the only possible cause. Okay, so the build rent, so now there's going to be a release that gets fired off. And it's waiting on my approval. So I'm going to disable this uh, um, this build for now. No way to I'll just go down to this one and disable it here. Control options enabled. Just saving this, uh, just disabling this for now so that it doesn't get confused in the process. Um, really should be going through. Uh, I'm gonna double check the repository and the config and make sure that that's still. On that, that's good. My local history is going to be a little out of whack. That's fine. Uh, deployment failed on my release, so let's see why. Okay, we'll stop the external process. <laughs> okay. Uh, why, why are you giving me hell about that?
Oh, the joys of all of this. I guess while that's going on, what I can do is I uh, screwed up my git history on this a little bit um, on this branch, so I can't reuse it for anything. So I'm going to go ahead and check out master and do a git pull. I'll have to create a new branch if I need to make any changes or fixes to that existing one. And it's failed again. File in use. <laughs> uh, let me go. I saved that. Let me go here and uh, try stopping. Alright, so it definitely can't be in use if it's not running, um, but that's kind of ridiculous. I'll have to uh, troubleshoot this later um, and find out why. here okay so Three errors, one warning. Again? How can the file be in use when... Okay. That's a... Interesting error. Um, that's weird. Saying that uh, it's locked. Um, and this doesn't even give me the full uh, information here that I get from the other one. And here's the annoying thing, like, if I want to try and copy this link from here... Oh, it's going to let me do it, this. Ah! Like, just let me copy this, please. No! <laughs> oh. I'll have to... There we go. See what it says about this. I've definitely never run into this before. And I stopped the application, right? Like, it's not even running. So how could it be locked? Let's, uh, oh, I'm not even on the browser. That's uh, even more helpful. Um, so this is the uh, error message that I mean, error files in use. It's 
weird. My initial configure, my initial deployment went just fine. I might have a real problem with my uh, deployment pipeline. So we'll try one more time here. Again, file in use. I don't know how to fix that. Like, I rebooted it, stopped it. Doesn't do anything. Um, all right, well, that's a brick wall. Uh, so, what we do need to do is did I delete that? Uh, branch um, as part of my I did so let me check out that branch again push it Make sure the branch is re uploaded here. What is? All right, so. So, like this one right here is the uh, commit that I need to roll back to. <laughs> Possibly. Uh, So I'm going to go back to VS Code. I'll have to troubleshoot that later. Look into it, figure out some ways around that. Um, for the time being though, I need to get my repo back in order. So uh, to do that, we need to go to here, check out master master and then I'm trying to remember the best way to revert an entire merge it's not a Great. Let me 
just double check uh, something on the browser here in the yeah so the build that uh, Hmm. Pull request. It's the merge. Um, and that was uh, successful, right? Like, got a thing in there and worked. Copied it. Me, uh, I just don't want to get hung up by something completely stupid, right? Like, Enable MS deployment app offline true. Let's try that. Why not? <laughs> it's just uh, making a change to the uh, project file, so we'll uh, give that a shot. I mean, what could possibly go wrong, right? Like, that's in the pub XML. I'm not doing anything with the pub XML. Like, I don't know, that's not going to help anything. Um, that's just really weird. Like, even stopping the uh, function didn't seem to cause it. So somebody, like, I'll stop this. Hoping for just a uh, fluke, right? Like, I don't know why this would do this. It's not even in. But we'll give it one last try, and then I've got to try. Uh, reverting all these changes and fixing that. Okay. Whatevs. Uh, deployed fine that time. And we have our new Discord event handler in there. Whether or not it works is a different story. Um, in here, on uh, VS Code, I'm going to
Okay, so we should be uh, good there. I'm going to now do a pull request to uh, accept in our changes to the new registration. Um, back here. Uh, new pull request from CAC add registrations with Discord. So this this is not going to work. Uh, I need to rebase on uh, master and then do this because it's not it's not going to work like I know for a fact that this is not going to work so uh, me uh, switch back over to Here and then go to uh, files. We need to change from master. We need to get to this one. We're gonna copy this. We're gonna go back to master. We're going to get pull. And then we're going to go back to CAC add registration to Discord terminal. Get rebase master. Did, right well, stage them then do that get push force with lease all right I noticed this was weird when I was looking at the pull request that it was just showing like some additions and removals and that's definitely not would have flown at all into this so uh, I'm gonna go back to pull requests create pull requests with this that looks better um, so in the let me just make sure my log streaming is still going on properly over here okay that's good uh, before I merge this um, I do need to go into the pipelines build and uh, re-enable this um, step So now I can go back to the pull request and complete it. I'm going to watch this in uh, VS Code where I've got log streaming going on. So we should be able to see the uh, activity and whether or not it blew up. So 
the QAD stuff is going good there. I'm seeing some callbacks. It looks all informational and with no errors. Hub challenges are coming through. It's showing the Discord name and and the stream name for these. Firefox then I can look at the build for this uh, and see that uh, it ran this requested subscriptions um, current subscriptions were none queued subscriptions for that um, so if I run a new build of this uh, so I'm going to queue a new build and uh, just off of master. Um, I'm just going to double check that everything was added back in. It's item potent, so it shouldn't uh, add anything that's already there. And it shouldn't remove anything that's, you know, whatever. It should be fine, right? So requested subscriptions, current subscriptions. Okay, good. So everyone got subscribed. We're, we're hunky dory there. Um, so the only thing left to do is to test this with a stop stream and a start stream. Uh, <laughs> if anybody is here who has, that's on this list that has a stream, like Corey, are you there? Do you want to start here? No, I'll just, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll stop my stream I need to um, um, get some refreshments and uh, uh, take care of a few things, and then um, we can come back and see if the new uh, notification works. Um, so I'm going to stop the stream and then come back in a few minutes uh, after I've been sure that the um, stream offline notification has come through, and then I'll uh, come back. So uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks.